Hey everyone, it's good to see everybody here. Welcome everybody. Uh, I'm so glad that you guys are joining me right now from everywhere. I appreciate. Uh, if you can like this stream, please do. And if you can share with your friend, please do. And also, um, we'll have a chance and opportunity for you guys to come and to join me and to share as well your thoughts and what you think. Because I want to open up this discussion, and I, which I think is really important and very necessary for us to have these kind of discussions, all right? Because I, I kind of feel like for so long time, Africa, we have been a place that, um, you know, we, we do not really own our own narratives. We do not really create our own narratives. A lot of things that are happening in Africa, uh, somebody else say this and this about Africa. Somebody else say this and this about our leaders or somebody else say this and this about whatever that is going on in Africa. That's, that's how I feel. That's what's going on in Africa. And I think it's a time for us young Africans to actually stand up and to have difficult discussions like this. I really hope that I would have our Libyans here today to hear their testimony or what they will say about, you know, Muhammad Gaddafi, Muhammad Gaddafi, the um, uh, ex-leader. But also me, personally, I have my own opinion. And also you have your own opinion according to all the data and all the informations you have. Let me say, by the way, right now, it has, always, it has already been 11 years since the death of uh, Muammar Gaddafi. Um, I think he was killed in 2011. And it's been a while. I mean, it's been a very long time. And, um, and, 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 you know, if you stand for Africa, and if your message is about Africa, I think you'll never stop mentioning Muhammad Gaddafi um, because of what he believed in and because of what he stood for. And we, we all know that. If you don't know that, then please go and check out the, the, the history of Muhammad Gaddafi. But not only that, I really hope we can have Libyans, you know, to have the testimony, to hear testimony from our brothers and sisters from Libya. And hopefully one day we'll get a chance to get there to go there to hear this testimony. Today, what I'll do is this, guys. I'll give you a different kind of points, a different kind of things that Muhammad, Muhammad Gaddafi did, you know, during his time when he was a leader. And you guys can judge by yourself. Just like the way I titled this live stream today, was Gaddafi a dictator? Was he a dictator? Is that really the title that we are giving to Gaddafi? Is that really the title that he deserved to have? Is that really how his own people, Libya, sees him? Is that really how Africans see we see him? Because, I mean, what is important is this. It's, it's, it's about what you think about yourself. And apart from that is what those people, your family, think about you. It's very important. Because sometimes you might be a bad guy and you think yourself that, oh, I'm a good guy. That's why you always need to think about others as well, to kind of like hold yourself accountable, how others are think about you. So in this case, how Libyans think about Gaddafi and how the rest of Africans think about Gaddafi. That's what I want to know. And I'm going to open the, the stream here before I share the points that I want to share with you guys. Like I prepare like 16 different points that Muhammad Gaddafi did during his regime, all those years that he was, you know, he was a leader of Libya. So I'll share with you guys. I'll prepare them. They're right here. I'll show you from one to another one. But before that, I want to give an opportunity to you guys, the viewers who are watching, to hear your opinion. Was Gaddafi a dictator? That's the simple question that I want to hear your answer. So I'm going to open here the place, and I'm going to share the link with you guys. I want you to come in here and to share your point of view. Uh, we, we might have a lot of people coming here. I still don't know, but I will allow one person after another one to come and to share your view. What do you think about Muhammad Gaddafi and his regime? You'll give your, first, your one point, so prepare your point very well. You'll give you one point, and then we'll welcome another person to give their own view as well. And then eventually, I'll give my points that I prepared today. But before anything, let me share the link here in the comment section. And I want you guys to, to think about it. And before anything, I'm just going to pray, and then... Uh, I'm going to have you guys coming here over to share your opinion. God, I thank you for today and for this session that we're having to discuss about Africa, to discuss about uh, our leaders and our people. 
So we pray for your wisdom and for your spirit and for your guidance all the way from beginning to the end of this session. In your precious name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right. The link is in the comment section already. And whatever that you have thought in your mind, this is the question. Like I just, I just put their question, was Gaddafi a dictator? Do you think he was a dictator? Because that's how the media has been spoken, has been saying for the past 11 years, even before he was killed, that's what was, that, that what was, was, was being spoken. You know what I'm saying? And that's what a lot of people, even those people who do not even understand what really went down, who do not even understand the history and what went down in Libya, they believe that. You'll ask a lot of people, if you mention this in the name of Gaddafi, they'll be like, oh, that dictator. That's what you will hear people say. But let's go to the fact. Let's go down and see what really went down. And I got to say this, guys. There's no a single leader in Africa or in the world that is perfect. There's no single leader that will do everything right by the books. Everybody will make a mistake. But today, I want you to be a judge of this. So I want to I welcome. If you have an op opinion, please, you can come and share. But if you don't, I will go ahead and I share these different points that I prepared that I really, really want to share with you guys, for you guys to think about this, to hear and to see and to, to, to begin to understand that, you know, this is a very important topic. I think it's very important for us to go through all the leaders we know in Africa. All the leaders and how they were labeled, how they were called, why they were killed and all those stuff, to go through them and to talk about it. It's very important for the future of this continent. It's very important to know what happened in the past so that we may know these are tricks, these are ways that most of time they're using to dismantle Africa. And I'm not here to victimize myself, but I'm here to ask you guys about your own leader. I'm asking you guys about your African leader. And I put that picture for a very specific reason. You can see the clothes that, you know, Gaddafi is wearing. You know, a lot of time we are, a lot of times, some of us who are skeptical, you know, about, you know, the northern part of Africa, that a lot of them, they're not consider themselves as Africans. We have those says, but most of the time we had here people coming on Sohel Nation and share the spirit of Pan-Africanism. And the good example you can see are Gaddafi and what he stood for. So, all right. Let me go this. As I'm waiting for you guys, if there's anyone who will come, I'll allow them to come. The link is in the comment section. But let me begin to share with you one point after another one. So during Muhammad Gaddafi regime, the one thing that I'll share with you, there were no bills for electricity. So electricity, it was free in Libya. Nobody paid for it. Free. Name one single country in Africa or even outside of Africa, that they don't pay for electricity. Them single country. But Libya, there were no bills for electricity. It was free. That's the first thing. Another thing, the second thing that it was happening during his regime is that there were no interest from the bank. So when you borrow the money or when you do whatever, there were no interest paid you receive exactly amount of money that you borrow and you go back you pay exactly amount of money that you borrow without interest with no interest that's in africa libya during gaddafi's regime another point during gaddafi's regime house was how house was just a basic needs to all people to all libyans in fact gaddafi himself he mentioned he said that his own parents, they were not qualified to have a house until, I mean, before all Libyans get a house. So that's what he said. He said that I want all the people of Libya to have their own houses, even before my own parents. That's what that is. So housing was the basic needs for all Libyans, all of them, to have houses. But another, the fourth thing that was happening during his regime, if you guys, you're, 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 you're married today, Man, oh God, man, I, you know, I'm not married yet, man. I'll go to, I'll go to Libya, and I'll have, I'll have a passport of Libya, and then I'll get married there. So if you get married in Libya, this is what happened: you received fifty thousand, fifty k dollars for just an apartment, soon after your wedding. So all the couples that will go there and get married receive fifty k, just for an apartment, and for for your life, it's just kind of like congratulation. 50k dollars guys all right so education 
and treatment. This is the fifth thing that was happening during Gaddafi's regime. Education and treatment was free. Education, guys, and treatment was free. So before Gaddafi, before, before his regime, the educated Libyans, they were only 20%. 20% of the population of Libyans that were educated before his regime. But after his death, 8% of Libyans, they were educated. Education and treatment were free. Before he came to the regime, 20% they were educated. After his death, 80% were educated. <laughs> all right, six point, all right? Libyans were given farms for free. Farms, houses, all right, for keeping animals and raising animals, tools for agriculture, everything they were provided. If it was fertilizer, they were provided to everybody. It was kind of like a hobby, you know, for them to farm. You know, this country, by the way, it used to be wilderness before. But during his regime, everything changed. And this is what was happening. Point number seven. So if you are a Libyan, all right, and you, you cannot afford your treatment, like you're supposed maybe to leave Libya to go to another country for treatment. Let's say you're supposed to go to India for treatment and you cannot afford. You know what? Government will pay all the expenses for your treatment outside. We'll take care of that. And this, is, sounds, this sounds like heaven. All right. <laughs> a point. <laughs> if anyone would want to buy the car, then the government, what we'll do, we'll top up. We'll give you 50% of the expenses you need to buy a car. They give it to you. Here, you go, 50% <laughs> to buy you a car. And the petrol expenses, this point number nine, petrol expenses. Guys, petrol expenses, it was only $0.14 per liter. <laughs> One liter of petrol. It was $0.14. And Libya, yo man, let me say this, man. This is very dangerous topic we are talking about today. Truth shall set us free. We need to know these things. What was happening? And Gaddafi, those 11 years ago, before he was killed, he said one speech that it actually came to pass today. The plans of taking him down and how Libya is going to suffer and struggle after he's killed. Because that life that they were having, people, they did not want those people to have this kind of life. They did not, have, they did not want to have that. The Westerners they they did not want to have that. So petrol expenses, it was only $0 $0.14 per liter. Point number 10. So Libya. During the Gaddafi regime, listen to this. Libya did not have any debt. Any debt. Did not have any debt. In fact, they had a reserve of $150 billion. They did not have any debt during Gaddafi, but they had a reserve of $150 billion. But right now, after his death, they have no reserve. And in fact, they depend on aids and loans. They took down Gaddafi, and now all the reserve money, $150 billion, is gone. But now they're begging for aids and loans. They, they live on that. The country that did not have debt, the country that highly it was supporting African Union, they give a lot of money to African Union, right now they have nothing. It's just like the rest of African countries beg for AIDS and loan. Guys, this is African country in Africa. It had no debt and had a reserve of money. That's how Africa should be. That's how Congo should be. That's how Tanzania should be. That's how Ethiopia and all the countries, Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, that's how African countries should be. We should have reserve of a lot of money and we should not have debt. This is what Gaddafi did. Point number 11, if you graduate from university and you, get, you don't get a job, the government will pay you the standard amount of income according to your expertise until the time you get a job. 
<laughs> if you graduated today and don't get a job, then the government will pay you. I'll give you an amount of money, a certain amount of money, according to your expertise, until the time you get, just to, to keep, your, to keep your, your, your head going. That, hey, here, some sort of insurance. We'll give it to you. Point number 12. A certain amount, the, the, the amount of money that was received from the oil, selling of oil, guess what? A certain amount of money, it was installed in every Libyan's account. That's why I need Libyans here, guys. So I need Libyans to confirm these things. So the oil was sold from Libya. And a certain amount of money, it was installed in Libya's account. If you're Libyan, you have your account, they install a certain amount of money. The income that comes from selling oil. Why? Because the resources, it belongs to all of you. All the resources that are in here in Africa, I mean, it belongs to you. But today, a lot of resources have been taken by Muzungus. I've been taken by Chinese. I've been taken by Americans. I've been taken by, you know, friends. I've been taken by all those, all the resources we have. In fact, those resources, it belongs to you. It's in your land. So when we sell them, a certain amount of money, you, you should have a lot of money. Africans, I mean, Africans, we should be billionaires. You guys remember how Libyans were living back in the days? Yes, they had challenges. Yes, they had things. But you remember their lives. You remember that country. And that is what... They hated to see that. How can this African country live like this? You don't pay for electricity. You only pay zero point one four dollar for a liter of petrol. You get like fifty k dollars just for getting married. You get houses. You get farms. You get man. What kind of country is this? I'm not finished. Every lady who gave birth in Libya was given five thousand dollars just because of the production. Just because of that. You give a birth to a baby, you get $5,000. Hey, man. Oh, that was happening in Tanzania. <laughs> oh, everybody will give a birth, you know. Everybody will give a birth. Even guys who wish to give birth. 5000 US dollars. You give a birth, you get that. 40, this is another point, 40 loaf of bread, loaves of bread. It only costed $0.15. 40, like 40 loaves of bread, those slices, 40 of them, only $0.15. You eat until you say, okay, this is done. And 25% of Libyans had a degree. 25% of the population. They went all the way to university and Harvard degrees. And the last point that I prepared for today, Gaddafi himself made the biggest water project in the whole world. And it was called Great Man Made River that causes water to be available 24 seven in the wilderness country. You know Libya, where it's located. But this guy, he made a great, one of the, this is not one of the, the greatest water projects in the world called Great Man Made River. That causes like water to be available all over the country for 24 seven. So all these issues that we have of water, like today we don't have water, they we don't have water. This, this, the location of this country is located actually in the middle of the wilderness, but you have water 24 seven. 24 seven across the country. People, they had access to that. They farm, they did all of those. This guy made it, he did that. These are only 16 points that I prepared for today to share with you what really went down during his regime, what was happening in the country. So let me ask you this question. Was Gaddafi a dictator? Because if all of these things happened during his dictatorship regime, what would have happened if he was not a dictator? Was he a dictator? That's the question that I'm asking. And I gave you a few points that I already know for you guys to judge for yourself. What do you think? Do you think was, was he a dictator? And all these things that I'm giving to you, remember, guys, he was, he was donating a lot of money to African Union. Remember his dream to create African currents. Remember his dream, like, to... Uh, to, to so for so, he had so many dreams about Pan-Africanism and about Africa. And this is what costed him. 
and lost his life. His people, as Africans, turns our back on him and he was taken down just like a wicked man, just like um, a thief on the street. And he was broadcasted, man, he was like, people were watching it. Was Gaddafi a dictator? How much do we believe what other people are telling us? Did you know about these few points that I share with you, 16 points of what was happening in, in Libya during his regime? Do you know what is happening right now there? No reservation, no reserve of money, aids and loan, all international organizations are there. And those guys are living as if they never had anything, man. That country that it was just full of milk and honey, people are living hot. It's, it's no longer there. It's no longer there because somebody came and wanted to give Libyans a better life. What kind of better life did you give to Libyans? What got a better life did you give to them? Why am I sharing this with you guys? Because us as Africans, I always say this, we need to stand with our leaders. Every leader in this world, they have weaknesses. Every leader, they have bad reputation. All of them, they've done something bad. All of us human beings, we have something bad we're doing in our lives. But do not let anyone turn you against your leaders. No matter what happens, never let anyone turn you against because this is what they label African leaders. Oh, he's a dictator. They say it for Magufuli too. One day we'll come here and talk about that. Was Magufuli a dictator? We'll come here to talk about that. And give you a lot of points, a lot of things that that man did. That's what they will say. That's why we said that this is not good for your country. Somebody's coming to your country and tell that your leader is not good for your country. The leader that you have chosen for those, you know, countries that are choosing. And this, it tells us that we, we, we are not satisfied. Man, in, in this case, with, with all this point that I shared, do you have an idea like how much that life was for them? Libya, when you go there and you see all this kind of privilege, you don't pay for electricity, you don't pay for the bills, you only pay for $0.14 per liter of petrol. That was not happening anywhere else in the world, but it was happening there. You sell oil and the money, certain amount of money goes to all your accounts. Man, you graduated, you don't have a job, you've been given a certain amount of money each month for you to stand up for yourself. You give a birth and you get 5000 You get married and you get 50000 Man, man, was he a dictator? Why did we turn against him? Why we cannot stay behind our leaders? Why we cannot stand there with them? Why do we believe what the Western media says? Why do we believe what the West, what the Americans says, what the French says, what the, the, the Europeans say? Why do we believe what they say about our people? There's a problem somewhere, and that problem is in us Africans. Look down on each other, don't believe in ourselves. Looking at other Kara, other less, and be like, oh, I mean, they know better than us. Oh, they have a knowledge better. They know what is good for us than us. You see how we treat, we treat, we treat, um, you see how we treat Westerners in our countries. And this shows that there's a problem somewhere. I met someone. I was really hurt. Very hard. It is just happened two days ago. Two days ago, I was having a dinner with my two Korean friends. They visited here in Tanzania. So I was having dinner with them. And then I called my motorbike to go back home. It's, it's like an Uber, right? I called in and then he came to pick me up. This guy... And this is sad, man. And this is Tanzanian, man. This guy, he saw those two uh, Koreans ladies. And this guy said, oh, man, please connect me. Give me their numbers, their numbers. And I was like, and, and I just ignore him. I just ignore him. I, I, you know, I, I, I stayed, you know, beside, I mean, you know, um, on, the, on the motorbike. I stayed there. And, and this guy kept on. He said, man, just, just give me his number, man. I, I, I want to get their numbers because I've been finding his name, Mzungu. I've been finding him Mzungu for so long. I just want to get Mzungu. And this is what, what he says. He said, man, he said this. He said, he said, man, they're human beings. Man. He said, he said, we are sinners, but they're not sinning. 
Like literally, it's telling me, it's like, hey, those Muzungus, they don't sin. We Africans, we sin, but them, they don't sin. Yeah. Imagine somebody telling me that this guy, he did not know who I am. He said, they, they don't know how to sin. They don't sin, but we sin. And then this guy said, I just want Mzungu. He said, even if it's just, the, if I get old lady, even if it's 80 years old, I just, I'll get her, I will marry her because I want that. Man, and I started to ask this man, man, this guy annoyed me so much, so much I wanted to jump off that, that motorbike and then just walk all the way home. And this guy annoyed me so much because of what he was saying. And then I asked him, I say, do you know Muzungu? I'm not saying this to paint my picture, but I'm telling him to know what's really because this guy, he don't know anything. He do not know anything. I told him, do you know the history of colonization? Do you know what happened during colonization? And he said, oh, no, man, man, they didn't do anything, man. We are the one who did this and this and this. This man, like, literally he talks something that he has no idea of. And then I started to give him stories. I started to give him stories. And then I asked him, I said, so what do you think now? This guy, he didn't want to even change. His mind, and his thought. He kept talking the same thing over and over and over again. But what I did is, for me, I gave him information that he needed to know. I said, hey, man, Muzungus, they're just human beings like you. You seems like you really want to have that. Okay, you can go ahead and have that. And one day you come, you agree with me. You'll find out what it's all about. But this is just an example of majority of people who are thinking that, oh, you're African, this color, you, you are sinners. And then you do not understand that where we are right now, it's because of their work and what they've done. But there's a problem somewhere in our mind. There's an issue somewhere in our mind that we do not appreciate ourselves. We do not appreciate each other. We do not appreciate our countries. We do not appreciate our leaders, no matter what they do. We do not. We always demand more. It's good to demand more, but there's always a fine line. There's a fine line. You can demand more, but not turn your back on your country. We have people running away from the countries because things are happening. Bad things are happening. We have people that are saying, you know what? I would rather, you know, even, even if today you allow me, I'm going to kill the leader for what is happening in my country. We have people saying things like that in our continent. We, we don't have loyal. loyalty. Loyalty is like, it's like a proverb in Africa. Where is loyalty to our people? Where is loyalty to our race? Where is loyalty to Africa? Where is loyalty to our traditions, to our customs, to our beliefs? Where is loyalty to our countries, to our continent, and to our people? Where is loyalty? Where is loyalty, man? Where is your loyalty? Today, majority of people, they believe Gaddafi was a dictator because of the news and what they've been told. The, there's no Western media mention all these things I told you today. No one of them mentioned how the life was good there. I told you that before he became a leader, 20% of the majority were educated. But after his death, 80% of Libyans were educated because education was free and treatment was free. You go to hospital, it's free. You're being treated free. You go to school, free. Free. You, you want to go to get uh, to get treatment in, in India and you don't have uh, the money to go there, the government will pay for you for everything for you to go there. Loyalty. Loyalty is the most important thing that Africans we should learn. We should learn that from other races. You should learn that from Asians. Man, these people, man, they have loyalty to their race. They have loyalty to their people. That's why you see, like, if you come to, to Africa, you see, you will never see, like, you'll never see a single Chinese, like, living in the hood somewhere there. No, they always live together somewhere. They always work together. They're always together in everything. If they're in trouble, they're together. If they're celebrated, they're together. If they're, they, they cry, they're together. You can find that in, 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 in white people as well. They have loyalty to their races. They have loyalty with one another. But where is loyalty in Africa? Where is our loyalty? Where's your loyalty? Do you have your loyalty to your country? You can have your loyalty to your country, but also have your loyalty to the continent of Africa because we are Africans. Yes, we are different men. We have like 54 different countries in Africa. These people are not the same. Even the culture in Africa not the same. You, Ghanaian, might come here to Tanzania and have a culture shock. It's a normal thing. It's a normal thing because we are in different countries. We have different culture. We were born different. We have different, we have 
we have to appreciate and to know that we have diversity, a lot of diversity in Africa. As long as we know that, then we have to embrace. We have to know that we're different. Just because I look black, just like you, it doesn't mean that we should agree in everything. It doesn't mean that I should eat everything you eat because, ah, oh, you're Africa, oh, you're black, you can eat this. No, we have different kind of culture. A different, you know, somebody challenged me before. He said, he said, he said, Mika, there's no such a thing as an African culture. And I was like, what the, what, what are you saying? He said, there's no such a thing as African culture. He said, you know, he said in Africa, we have, there's a cultures in your tribe. Like we have different kind of tribes. Like we have more than 3000 languages in Africa and all those different languages, that means different tribes. So in every tribe, you know, you have your culture. Like if you go to your country and then you have these different tribes, they have their culture. Like there's this kind of culture, that kind of culture, that kind of, but he said, there's no such a thing as African culture. And it, it took me a while to understand, but then later on, I understood him because he was, he was saying that, hey, there's no such a thing as African culture because we have all this very diversity and every single thing we have, like different culture, different system, different norms, different traditions. And we need to understand that when we're fighting for one Africa, that we are not the same, that we are not one. We are not one right now. And that's why we're fighting for one Africa. We have different norms. We have different traditions. We have to understand that. When we understand that, then we can agree with one another. Then we can come together. Then say, oh, you act this way. Oh, we act that way. Okay, but we can still be together. All this diversity that we have, it doesn't mean that we should be separated, but we can be one people. We can be united. We can be one great family. Africa is one big family with 55 different children, 54 countries in Africa and one diaspora all across the world. That is Africa very diverse, but yet it's beautiful. And until the time we realize that, because if we knew 11 years ago, Africa would have stand behind Gaddafi. If we were one Africa, Gaddafi was not going to be killed. If Africa were one, we're not going to be killed because all Africa will stand and say, no, take your hands off Africa, hands off Libya. Because this is our country, we'll judge by ourselves. You do not have any lead. You do not have any say to judge what is happening in Africa. That's why we need one Africa, man. Because today, any leader in Africa, it can be taken down by anyone. And nobody will do any, anything about it. Nobody will do a shit about it in Africa today. Today, where is our loyalty to our race? Where is that oneness to our race? You go outside, there are black people being killed every single day. Are black people standing for them? Oh, we are running away. Oh, we are taking, we are taking phones and we are taking videos while our people are being beaten. Where is the loyalty? Where is the oneness? Man, we, there's, there's a problem somewhere. We are very individualistic. We need to come together. That's why I say, man, if... I, I said this when Ethiopia, I mean, when we're talking a lot about Ethiopia, that if Ethiopia is in trouble, all Africa should be Ethiopians and we should stand with them. Man, we have to feel each other's pain. If you do not feel the pain that is happening right now in Congo, where's your loyalty? You don't have loyalty. You don't have loyalty. You don't even understand the meaning of unity. You do not understand that. You don't have that. Because the only thing you care is about your state of life, is how you're doing right now, but you do not care about what is happening to other people. Burkina Faso, they're standing against friends. I shared this news. I, 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 I said this, guys, that you guys, please, go and visit our Instagram and our Twitter account. Twitter account is one Swahili Nation, uh, and uh, like one Swahili Nation, and then Instagram is official Swahili Nation. Go and check it out. We share news every single day there. And, oh, I thought somebody, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in very soon. And Burkina Faso, they're standing against friends, just like Mali. Mali, they were standing against, against friends. Now Burkina Faso is saying that we don't need you in our country. And you know, guys, we wrote even the letter to the president of friends, when the, our two brothers from, you know, Burkina Faso were killed because they were protesting, we, we, we wrote a letter. The president first said that, hey, take, take your troops. In Mali, the troops were taken away. But now Burkina Faso is standing there. They said, we don't want you in our country. Man, but, but this, this is not a fight of one country. This is not a fight of just a single country to fight like us. This is the fight for all Africa to come together and to fight together. If Burkina Faso is in trouble, all Africa should be in trouble. You understand what I'm saying? Man, if we stood with Mali, Gaddafi would have been alive right now. And so many things would happen in Africa. 
that he's gone. He is gone because we're not one. Okay, this is our this is our this is our Instagram account. We share news every single day. We have people working really hard every single day to find and to share the news. Please go and follow us on Instagram and just go and enjoy this. Let me share this link in the comment section. Okay, go and check. Look at this. All this news. This is Burkina Faso confirms end of military accord with friends. We started from there. Burkina Faso military leader demand friends depart. This is what they demand. They say, hey, we want you guys to get out of our country. You know what you're doing? Get out of the country. And this year. And then there's a the news about Congo going on. There's a the news about Cameroon. We share all the news about Africa. And for that, let me tell you guys, if there's anyone out there, if you are really connected to news and you want, uh, you want, to, you want to contribute and you know what is going on, maybe in your country or in your country and you are, you are in the news sector, you know what is going on, you want to help us with the news, with the updates, please stay connected with us. Send us information, your information in these emails I'll put here on the screen. And we'll reach out to you and we'll add you to the team of news. Swahili Nation SNN, Swahili Nation Network. will add you to the team for us to get more updates of what's happening in Africa. Go and check it out on, you know, this is, this is Instagram. I just shared the link. But let me show you Twitter as well. Twitter as well, we have an account there of official Swahili Nation. You can go and follow us, update and share all this news. If Africa were one, Gaddafi would have been alive today because all Africans were stared against him. I mean, with him. Eritrea has been sanctioned for many years. What is Africa doing for that country? Zimbabwe, what is Africa doing for them? Congo, what Africa is doing for that country? Ethiopia, Mali, Burkina Faso, all these countries. What is Africa doing for these countries? Loyalty is zero in Africa. We don't have loyalty with one another. And this year, I want this year to be the year of loyalty. I want this year to be reminded again, us Africans to be reminded again what it means to be loyal, what it means to stand with our people. This is our, our Twitter account. And even here, you see, uh, the profile picture of our Twitter account, you'll see here we have Gaddafi, we have, uh, you know, uh, Lumumba, we have Sankara, we have Magufuli. Yeah, these are, we, we share those news all the time. This Congo, what is going on there, all this news. Yeah. So please go and follow us and see what is happening. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me just invite, I have somebody here on the background. I know he will have something to say. Mr. Pai, welcome to the show, Pai. How are you? I'm good. Just eating lunch, <laughs> listening to the show. <laughs> it's, it's, it's been a while. Happy New Year, my brother. Yeah, Happy New Year. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. Yeah. So, what's, what's the topic? Is, is Gaddafi a dictator? Yeah, I mean, if, if, if you have been here, I mean, since the beginning, um, I was basically just sharing that. That, that was the question that I was, I was, I was posing to everybody. Uh, and also I shared like 16 different things that he did during his regime uh, just to, you know, to show that, okay, this and this, these are things that most of us, we don't know that were happening. Uh, but yes, I would love to, to hear your, your, your view on that. I mean, on that question, was Gaddafi a dictator? And what do you think about that? Well, um, I'd say hmm. when you when you ask if if Gaddafi is a dictator, you have to ask the right question: Is who was Gaddafi dictator for? Was Gaddafi a dictator to the African, the Black Africans? Was that Gaddafi a dictator to the Amazigh people, or was Gaddafi a dictator to the Afro Arabs? This is very really complex identity issue. Because in order, to, if if you look, a lot of these nations that were created in order to have one identity, whether positive or negative, whether violent or peaceful, there had to be a really strong reason for them to rally around. There had to be a really strong leader for them to rag, rally around, like you say, like a MAGA fully, like we have before. Like you have to have, you have to have a really strong leader. Like, like for example, in modern times, like Kagame, like clean, one of the cleanest cities in Africa is in, in Kigali. That's a really strong leader in order to bring those two, um, different identity groups in that country together. But if you say, if in those times, the, the people that would consider Gaddafi a dictator, if we're just talking about Africa and not talking about the West and all that kind of stuff, because we already had a stream on that. So <laughs> I wanted to talk about different stuff today. But um, the Amazons probably would have considered him a dictator because because the, Am the Amazons, if, if you look at like like real sources, like real Libyan sources, not just the the, the, the news, like the uh, the tabloid news. 
a lot of them they didn't they didn't necessarily like him because in order for them to create that one like unified Libya, right? They had to get rid of the MZ identity. Mm-hmm. Right? This is what, before he, he was Pan African. This is when he was Pan Arabist. So a lot of the um Amazil, their last names, their culture, and their ways of life, they all got rid of it. They, they turned it all into you know, like an Af- Af- Afro Afro Arab Arab type of culture in order to get one in you know, one country type of mindset. So those people that suffer from that and that didn't want to ch- necessarily change and become part of this so-called nation state, they might disagree with them. But the Afro Arabs in the country that maybe already look more like North Africans that are are like have genetics originally from the Middle East, they wouldn't have a problem with them. The African, the Black Africans didn't have a problem with them because for the most part he needed their help because Libya was so small. So most of them they wouldn't have a problem with them. I'd say most of them, not all of them, because. But um, yeah, yeah I think it, the, when you say was was Gaddafi a dictator? Obviously, he's a dictator for the West because he, he was taking all the, the resources that they were stolen, that that, that they were stealing from them, and he was a dictator for the Amazons. But if he's as far as Sub-Saharan Africa and um, Afro Arabs in his country, they didn't have a problem with him. Those the Amazon people that had a problem with him because he's Amazon himself, but he didn't he didn't he didn't consider himself Amazon. Uh, he considered himself either a, an Afro Arab or an African. He never really considered himself what he what he is ethnically. He's ethnically an Amazigh. Mm. Yeah, so it's really complicated identity identity politics if you think about it. From let, my let, let, let me ask, let me ask you this question: Is like so, someone when you have a leader who is staying in the regime for a long time, for twenty years, for thirty years, or even more, is that uh, is that an obvious evidence that this leader is a dictator simply because this person is staying for long? We have a lot of leaders like that. We have Gaddafi, we have, um, um, uh, we have Kagame, I mean, we have um, Seven, we have uh, was Zimbabwe, this um, the, the ex president of Zimbabwe. Um, uh, his, his name is Amugabe. Yeah. Is that the obvious evidence or the obvious point that for all of, all of us, we should say that, okay, this person is a, is a dictator because he's staying on the leadership for a long time. Is, is that why we should hold uh, kind of like, you know, yeah. Well, you understand what I'm trying to say? It depends on their activity. If they're destabilizing the country, then yeah. Well, at least I, I say the locals should consider themselves a dictator. But yeah. if there's no other, if there's not no other option, and you have a leader that's so-so, the one that is both let's play in both sides, and they, and has been there for 20, 30, 40 years, and you just get rid of him, that might cause <laughs> instability in your country, like we see in like Libya. So I think I think at least. I don't know for sure, but at least my guess is that from a local perspective, they, they wouldn't want to get rid of them because they don't want to end up like a lawless country with 10,000 militias fighting against each other. Yeah. So they rather and, just keep the leader that's there. Yeah. They'd rather keep the status quo. But yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, that's true. That's true. And so do you think, do you think Gaddafi, was Gaddafi good for his people? Yeah, I think I think it was good for his people. All the initiative that they were create created in in the country, I think eventually they could have transitioned to like we see in maybe Tanzania, maybe a presidential type of system. But it's even even when he was in power, there were a lot of places that were still destabilized. That were that was it was a lawless state in some places still, even though it was yeah. peaceful in most areas because he modernized and he um, developed it. And you transform the, the country, but not everywhere was was safe in Libya. So, yeah, I mean, look how Libya is now with him gone. Mm. So today, um, and and was he good for Africa? Yes, he was good for Africa. I believe that if everything that he wanted to create, the big projects came to pass, that um. I'd say Africa would probably be at least six regions by now. At least, like it wouldn't, even, they would, they were the um the different uh like S. What was it name? Like static, like S S, S- stack. I think it's S stack. Uh, EAC. 
like um ECOWAS, all different all different economic blocks will be a lot more a lot more uh, a lot, we'll be working a lot better if he was still alive to be honest yeah you know and, and that, that, that that's what's sad pie that you know a lot of leaders that are gone we always this is what we always say we say that man if this person were here today we would have been there if this person was here today we would have been there so in a way I think we, 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 we really put our hope and our trust in a single person. And once they're gone, that hope is gone. And I think that's one of the things that in this generation, we have to do it different. We must do it different. We need to have a lot of rule models like that. A lot of them, not one. We need to have like the thousands of Gaddafis, you know, in a good way. We need to have the thousands of Mandelas, of Nyereles, of Nkurumas. We need to have that. So that even if one is gone, then we have the rest that will stand there and take us to the promised land. But a lot of things that we are going through right now, a lot of things that were initiated by our forefathers and leaders that are gone, it's just disappearing like that. It, it feels like these people were very lonely. And, and I think we go back to the loyalty I was talking about, that um, these people were, were sacrificing their life and doing pretty good for our countries and you know, our, you know, our continent, but it feels like they were alone because once they're gone, that legacy is gone as well. It feels like there's nobody who is carrying on and picking up the torch and just to move forward. It feels like they're just alone. Like today, mm -hmm. if you, you can name any good leader we have in Africa today, if they're gone, you might find that, you know, their legacy is gone as well. And they would say, oh, if we had that leader, it would have been this and this and this. Well, why do you but just, just to rebuttal my... Oh, sorry. Just to rebuttal my own point, though, <laughs> the problem the problem with that is having this youth, a type of youth leader, leadership. A lot of them they can't gain power because <laughs> the, the the leader that's particularly there, they know that maybe not themselves because they're obviously they're the president or prime minister or whatever. As soon as they leave, the the maybe the people that they're close to that might not be necessarily good, good people, might be criminals or whatever. <laughs> as soon as they leave, they're gonna get prosecuted. Some some of their friends and family that might have particular participate in that type of activity so you don't want to give up power in that and they don't want to they don't want to share power with a, a new leader that's representing a new political idea you know what i mean so a lot of them they just hold on to power not even just africa just everywhere in general everywhere they they want to protect their own in that that kind of way but sorry for cutting you. not at all not at all you know man for me i would really wish i really wish to have a libyan maybe one day you know if, if i had them here it would be really amazing to just you know get you know their view their perspective and where they are at. But, but i know I've, I've seen a lot i've seen a lot of them really uh you know regretting for you know what has happened to you know to him and you know where we are today because man those board leaders man who can stand and dictating thing like be like the boss of everything be like hey man, man look at look at that 0 0.14 a liter of petrol, zero point one four dollar, man. Like that. That's that's like you're living in heaven, man. That's like you you barely pay for anything. And man, I'm looking at that. I'm like, this was a man that was a threat <laughs> to the world leaders. And you know, when he speak, people listened. You know, because of what he did. You know, he was doing for you know for his. And I think the, that confidence also comes from doing good. It's very important for us to do good because when you do something, um, you know, for your people, there's a, there's a sense of, you know, confidence you have that, you know, what I'm doing is good. And like, like you have that. Me, for me personally, I feel that a lot of time, you know, and that what's give me energy, you know, to, you know, to move forward and to keep pushing, you know, for what I believe in, knowing that, oh, I'm doing good. Okay, but I gotta let you go though. I'm on one different time zone now. I'm visiting family. <laughs> How is right now? <laughs> this time zone thing is messed up. No, I said I have to let you go because I'm on a different time zone now. I'm visiting family. I'm not in Asia right now studying abroad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was nice are, talking are to you. Still, are you still in that country? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back for another semester. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm still waiting for you here. You know, I'm still waiting for you. <laughs> Yeah, we have a planned trip. Yeah, we have to plan definitely. Yeah. 
Oh, and 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 after this, I will share with you in the. I'll send to you in WhatsApp what's really going on with that with with that thing. There's one thing that I I'll I'll, I'll give you because you've always been asking about it. So I'll let you know a little bit later. Okay. Yeah, but I I got a new phone though, so maybe not now. Maybe maybe next month I'll join the old group chats that we had because I because I know this this uh the phone well the phone I am right now is hacked. I know that for a fact, but my new phone is not. So uh, that's why so I, I, I would yeah that, that's why that's why that's why I withdrew communication because if my phone is comp is my phone is messed up why would I that's why I was like I I wasn't associating with a lot of uh like like SNN or some of my friends because I didn't I didn't yes. want my phone is messed up but I have a new phone now and it's it's fine. All right, all right. So your your WhatsApp is not available. No, I have to create a new one. Yeah. Or transfer my old one, yeah. yeah okay. All right, man. So, Pi, I really appreciate, man, for for coming here for hanging out with me. Uh, you know, I hope I'll I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'll be having another show with one very brilliant uh, creator lady from Ethiopia. So it'll be it'll be interesting. I had yesterday. I'm having today. I'll have tomorrow. And this week, we're resuming our shows as well. When the will be having his shows, a big mm. will be having his show and. Tanzan will be having her show as well. So it's going to be very exciting. Wait, thank you for, 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 for stopping by. Okay, nice talking to you. Bye-bye. Appreciate it, man. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, yeah, I appreciate it. All right, guys. So that was one and only pie. And I'll say this, man. You know, as days goes on, this is the beginning of the year. I'm getting more ideas and more things you know i i i said before the beginning of this year that this is going to be a year of completeness and you know one thing that is speaking out to me through this stream today is loyalty i think we're going to do everything we can do to be loyal we need to be loyal to this continent we need to we need to be loyal to our people we need to be loyal to our fellow africans we need to be loyal to this continent to our leaders we need to be loyal to one another that's my prayer, and we're going to push that this year. Loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. So we're going to start with us. We're going to start with this community. If you're part of this community, the Swahili Nation One Africa, you got to be loyal to us. you got to be loyal with us. You have to. That's where we're starting. We're starting with home, and then we're extending further. And another thing that happened yesterday, I shared with you guys. Guys, this year, we started a teams in our countries. So we have Snoa. Ethiopia team. So we have Swahili Nation One Africa Ethiopia team, and we have a director in Ethiopia, and they have their own WhatsApp group as well. I'm in there as well. And we have Kenya, you know, uh, a Swahili Nation One Africa Kenya team. We have Swahili Nation One Africa Tanzanian team. We have Swahili Nation One Africa South Africa team. And we're still creating more teams in other countries as well. And why we have these teams? Because we want to start doing activities this year in our countries. I don't need to be there for activities to happen, but because we have our people in every country, these coordinators and the people, the family from Swahili Nation One Africa will be having activities in your countries. Yesterday, if you haven't watched the live stream of yesterday, please go and watch. It's very important. Maybe let me share with you guys here and the comment section can go and watch because these coordinators from these different countries, they were sharing what they were sharing what they um what, what kind of activities they will be doing. So we have, you know, there's some people they share about education activities. Okay, this is the live stream that we were here yesterday. You can watch it. They're sharing about education activities, about the um, social activities, about the uh, team building activities. So for example, social buildings is, is kind of like social activities, kind of like, you know, going to, let's say to the orphanages or to like clean the city, you know, with our, you know, Swahili Nation t-shirts right there, like, okay, this is the activity we are doing, volunteering activities, or educational, like going to schools and teach people about One Africa, about what we stand for, about this vision that we are having, right? Our team building activities, like, you know, doing some some hiking in Tanzania, you know, we're still planning to climb a mountain Kilimanjaro with our people, you know, doing that as well. Um, and so many different, so all these different leaders from all these countries, they came and share what they'll be doing. And I promised the first activities happening in Kenya, I will go there to participate in the first activity. So we have a Kenya WhatsApp group. So I one of Kenya WhatsApp group and the coordinator is Mwenda Tezi. It's amazing, man. Those Kenyans are chatting right there. They're talking. So if you're from Kenya, you are in Kenya, 
you want to be part of that, please hit us up right there. And if you are in our, you know, big group, the WhatsApp group, you know, just you can just contact Mwenda Tezi and you will be connected to Kenya team as well. All right. And also we have Ethiopia team. If you are in Ethiopia right now and you want to be part of that, now we have official teams. Please be part of that because we're not going to recognize anyone who is outside of those of these groups. We want to bring our people together. We want to have all these memberships and everything. We want to understand one another and want to plan because all these activities are not activities that we plan that, okay, this is what you guys are going to do. No, you guys will sit down as Ethiopians and decide that, okay, this year we're going to do A, B, C, D activities. That's what's going to happen. And you already have your coordinators. These are good people that I trust. These are amazing people that have been working with me for a while. And, you know, I have trust with them. So, um, you know, please be part of this. In Kenya, we have Mwenda Tezi. Uh, in Ethiopia, we have Mikias. Uh, in um, in Tanzania, we have Paul Kilaga. In South Africa, we have Ezra, His Excellency Ezra. And all the, we'll, we'll have even teams, so Hillenation One Africa teams in, in, in the diaspora as well. So very soon, we'll be in this year, in this month, and next month, we'll be mentioning uh, every country, and we'll be mentioning our coordinators from those countries and what they're standing for in Somalia, in Uganda, in different countries, in Rwanda, and everywhere. Yeah, so we're really excited for this year. Anyways, guys, so I, I really need to close this station, but... I appreciate everybody that commented here. It's very important to have our personal opinion. For me, this is what I'm trying to do. I really try my best for my opinion not to be influenced by anyone. That's why this was a Gaddafi dictator. It's not something that I plan to do. But today I was just, I came across something and I was thinking really hard. And I was like, no, I think everybody has a right to define. Don't let somebody define your leader for you. Or define your continent for you. You look at the things and you say, okay, this is right. This is not right. This is not right. Oh, this is right. This is right. You can call this because a lot of things that Gaddafi did in his regime, a lot of leaders, so-called political leaders, democratic leaders, they haven't done a thing about it. They haven't done a thing. So where is the line? Where is the line, guys? The line is loyalty. We got to be loyal to one another. Africans, we need to be loyal to our race. We need to be loyal to our people. I, I, I don't mean that you should not, like, you should hate other race. Or you should hate other people. No, I see the problem with Africans and loyalty. I see that. It's a big, big problem. That's why we can sell each other out. That's why when colonizers came, we sold our people. We sold our people. That's why people who killed Lumumba... Patrice Rumumba of Congo, he was actually Congolese right there. That's why people who actually killed Thomas Sankara was his best friend. Where is the loyalty? Even if your friend is doing crazy things, man, you cannot sell them out. We call it loyalty through thick and thin. We need to preach the message of loyalty to Africans. And for this year, guys, We'll hold the huge banner of loyalty and talk to our people. Be loyal to your continent, to your country, to your leaders, to your people. Loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. Ask yourself this question as we're finishing this, uh, this session. Ask yourself this. Are you loyal? Are you loyal to Africa? Are you loyal to Africans? Are you loyal to your people? Are you loyal to your race? Are you loyal to? Are you loyal? Oh, when... When you see them, you don't even care. When you see them are going through pain, you don't even care. Guys, we can lift each other. We can support one another. We are the community of Africa. We are Africans. We need to stand there for one another. And that's how we can bring unity, by embracing one another, regardless of our differences and things that we have not in common. Loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. All right, guys. I thank you. I want to appreciate everybody who joined today. I appreciate I see the architect is right here. He's joined me. I appreciate the architect. It's been a while. Happy New Year, my brother. I'm waiting for your shows, the architect. For some reason, the architect, you became a prodigal son. I'm waiting for your show, the architect. You can't do this to me. You know what, the architect? You, you, you got to let me know right now. When are you going to resume your show? 
we actually resuming shows uh, this week. You know, I started yesterday and today and tomorrow I'm going to have a show. This week, Mwanda Tez is going to do his show. Um, uh, you know, uh, Pastor Ezra is going to do his show. Um, Biggie is going to do his show. Tanzan is going to do her show. So we are resuming our show. The Architect, I miss your show, man. Are you going to resume your show? Oh, I'm not going to see you here. I'm putting you on the on the line here, the Architect. One Africa, one Africa people, worldwide, United Africa. So I appreciate for all the members. The Architect, I appreciate you, man. I, I see you are still a member. Thank you for the support and for everything you're doing. So for those members, we appreciate you guys. You might be asking yourself, hey, how, how can I support you guys with the move and everything that you're doing? Let me tell you this. The video you're watching right now, if you go to the description, you see the official accounts of Swahili Nation. You can go there and you can support. You can donate however you have. We have our official accounts. You can go and support. If you want to become a member on YouTube, you can also become a member. And in that way, you'll be supporting our movement. If you want to use Super Chat, Super Stickers, you can use. They're available right there. And in that way, you'll be supporting our movement as well. So for those who wants to... For those who wants to join the membership, I want to share with you guys the link. Uh, your name will have a little badge in front of it, and it will be with color just like the way you see the architect. The architect. Man, I'm waiting for you, man. I'm waiting for you because your shows, it was one of the most interesting shows, man, I've ever seen. I love the way that you teach. I love the way that you transfer your knowledge. You know what? Let me tell you this, the architect. We need that skills, man. We need that knowledge. You have no idea how many people are watching. You have no idea how many young people are just there watching, man. And when you stand there and you give those wisdom, man, diaspora, you guys have a huge skills. And I wish to have a lot of diasporas here hosting different shows. I wish, man, because that, that, that page is opening to you guys. Because we need that skills to our people. If it is technology skills, we need that. We, we, we need that to teach our people. And right now in this age of internet, we can teach our people through that. We need skills in this age. You understand what I'm saying? So, man, I love your session, man. And I know it can encourage a lot of young people. It's very well put, really inf informative. And, you know, even myself, I was learning a lot. So the architect, I cannot wait, man, to, to have your show back. I really miss that. Even if it's just 30 minutes a day. Even if it's just 30 minutes, it's cool. You know, that's something that our people can actually go watch and learn something. We need to learn something new. And today, I'm pretty sure you guys learned something new. If you join late, please go and check it out. I share 16 things that Gaddafi did during his regime, and that will help you to understand more. I got you, bro. I'll catch myself back and begin to express my ideas again. I love that, architect. I love that, man. You, you're one of the smartest men I've ever known, man. The, the platform, the, the, the triangle you created, and the way that you address your point um, the first time when you came and joined us, you know, you spoke about, you know, energy, you spoke about, we, you, you know, I, I, that energy, man, that's, that's the energy that came to all of us who were here. You know what I'm saying? So it's a time. It's 2023, a year of completeness. Let's complete stuff. Loyalty. Let's bring that back. We need to be loyal to our people. We need to be loyal to this continent. The architect. I appreciate, man. I love you. And thank you for everything. Guys, I'll just go to pray and then I'll be ending my session. God, I thank you for this session today. I had a couple of people joining here today and just listening and sharing their thoughts through comment sections about this topic that we're talking about today. One thing that stood up to us is about loyalty. To love our people, to love our countries, to love our continent, to love our leaders. And to stand with them, even when they fall short. So I just pray that you remind us, and through your word you guide us, so that we may please you every single day. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for your wisdom and for your presence. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. I love you. And you know, I might be, I might be doing. I don't know. I might be doing. Uh, okay, not maybe not today. I'm, I'm a little tired right now, but I love you guys. 
stay connected with us. And I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow at 9 p.m. East African time, we'll be having a show here with one guest from uh, Ethiopia, one of the great designers. And so come and join us and see what is happening. 9 p.m. East African time. I love you guys. I'll see you next time. I'll see you later. Ciao.